So again, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to share some of your knowledge with us. This session is being recorded. It will be shared on our private Facebook group at a later time. So please, if you miss something, look for that afterwards. And if you have any questions for our panelists, throw them in the chat or the Q&A section, and we will make sure that those get addressed. So we'll kick this off. We have Chris Silker with Keller Williams and Kathy Birkin with Berkshire Hathaway, uh, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Tommy Rains. Um, and my first uh, point, I guess, here is with the new executive order, realtors are able to leave their house to go to work. There are some restrictions, no more than four people at a home at a time. And the traditional open house is still something that is not permitted. So one thing that we are seeing a lot of is virtual open houses. So I'm not sure, Chris, if you've had a virtual open house, but I know, Kathy, you have. So I'm wondering if you could tell us about that experience and um, some of the things that worked with that, some of the things that didn't work. Sure. Um, I've done um, I've done two virtual open houses, and I apologize. My dog is squeaking a toy. They always pick a time uh, when you're on the phone to do that. <laughs> um, so um, they, um, they I've done two. I did one with the seller in the house and walking the video. Now remind I'm reminding you this is all before the governor let us back out uh, last Thursday. Um, so. Um, so the one that I did with the seller uh, worked out really great. Uh, we did a dry run on it the uh, day before. Um, it were, she did the walking through the property and I did the narrating of it and it worked out great. Um, the one I did that the seller took a video in advance of the open house, she took the video and then I had that video and I shared that video and then I narrated it, but it was a little choppier because um, I had to keep up with what she was doing. And with the one that the seller did, uh, the seller kept up with my narration. So that worked, that worked better. Um, there's some thought that I have had and I've talked to uh, some other agents and other powers that be about, is there a point to doing any virtual open houses at this point? And Chris, you can let me know your thoughts too because um, right now that people can get in by appointment, um, is there a point to doing a virtual open house now that they can get in by appointment? I've heard two schools of thought on that. And since uh, the doors opened up, I have, um, and since I've put videos on YouTube and they're available in through the MLS as well, I haven't had any calls for, are you having an open house? I've had scheduled appointments. What about you, Chris? Uh, same. My, the listings that I've put on the market since we have uh, had the ability to go show homes have been very, very busy. Um, with appointments, I mean, literally booked 8.30 a.m. through 7 o'clock at night. Um, and, and offers have been coming in pretty quickly, which is you know great for the business. Um, a lot of discussion in our, our market center about virtual opens. Um, I know there are several agents who've um, had some success and, and some agents that are just really looking for anything that they can do to, to bring value to their sellers and their listings um, and, and get more traction and marketability and, and consumer awareness around them. So I think in that effort, um, there is still um, plenty of value in, in working through the process of a virtual open house. I haven't held any. I've done many um, virtual tours and showings, um, but not you know mass open houses. My, my real concern there was, um, spending the time, energy, and effort getting a seller to, uh, to host one of those. Um, and yet, I didn't know how to publish that, how to get that out there without just, I mean, we could run Facebook ads, and, and that's well and good, but their, their main source of data for getting people to attend an open house has always been through an MLS feed that publicates out to Zillow, Truly, or Realtor, et cetera. Um, and, and my concern with that is an uninformed consumer or even worse, an uninformed agent um, trying to show up in person to an open house, knowing not reading directions, because how often does that happen that somebody doesn't actually read the paragraph that says, 
do not attend, this is a virtual open, click the box to attend. Um, and, and I didn't want to put my sellers in a position where somebody's knocking on the door. Um, yeah, our, the open houses, the two that I've done, um, we put it out through the company, we put it out through FaceTime, or Facebook rather, we mm -hmm. put it out through HomeSpotter um, and some other social media sources and it specifically said virtual. Um, and we had attendance wise, I had uh, one agent at one and two buyers. Um, the other one I had um, more, more agents than buyers because they wanted to see, they wanted to see the house. And then yeah. one who wanted to see how it was being done. Um, I didn't, I felt that, uh, you know, at the time where we couldn't get out to show property, it was a good thing. Now that agents can out, get out and show property, I don't know if there's a ton of value to doing that and putting the sellers out. Um, but we can also go into a house now and do it from there. Um, as long as, you know, they're, they're comfortable with that. And it would be just me in the open house doing the tour and showing it. That's the route that my team is looking at pursuing okay. more uh, in this time is where we can be present uh, for a two hour block of time. We can do okay. uh, a walking video tour once every half hour and then be playing, you know, a Matterport or a, vir a video in the interim and, and be answering comments, questions, concerns, answering the phone, you know, what have you. Okay. Um, uh, we have the ability to uh, print signs with QR codes and links. Um, for you know, joining Zoom meetings automatically without passwords, stuff like that, so that the average consumer can hopefully jump onto that more quickly. Um, I think there's probably more value in that route where we be the, uh, the professional, right, are at the house um, mm -hmm. running the show a little bit more normal, I guess, even if people aren't there. I think there could be some value in that, but you're absolutely right. Um, the average consumer, the, the vast majority of buyers are just gonna make an appointment. They're gonna, they're gonna find a way to get inside the house because that's how they're going to be comfortable making a decision. When, when you don't have that option, it's all well and good. Um, but when that option is available, that's always going to be a preferred option. Great. Thank you both. Um, can you talk a little bit about what the process of writing offers looks like during this time and how it differs from you know even writing an offer on a property two months ago is there is there anything different is there anything that agents should be noting um with offers in the times of covid we'll say Chris, I'll I think, let you take this one. okay um I, I think now that we are back to work we're not seeing uh drastic differences in offers um really the two sides of this, um, writing an offer for a buyer's protection and then reviewing or countering an offer for a seller's protection while we were in the shutdown were two very different things because we had two very different goals. Um, that was maybe a time when buyers and sellers were more polar opposite in protections than we've maybe ever seen before. Um, and then that created some real challenges and negotiations to overcome for the benefit of all parties. Finding that win-win for everyone became significantly more difficult because there was so much unknown. Um, and so uh, my team and I had had some some interesting solutions to try and work through that. I don't know that it's really relevant to go into those right now because it's no longer the case. Um, I, I think what we're looking at today moving forward is that um, we have to remember that um, despite everything, uh, or I guess in spite of everything, we still have a very competitive seller's market. Um, and the biggest, the best thing to remember right now for writing an offer is um, if you're representing a buyer, you are working on making sure you can secure a contract, get a home um, under contract so that you can continue to move forward. And then we really don't have any um, different challenges today with getting inspections and appraisals done than we had two months ago. Um, I think a lot of people are really surprised that um, the market hasn't drastically changed after all of this. Um, we're still in many ways, uh, price-wise and negotiation-wise, kind of where we were leaving off in early March. Um, it, was a, it was a giant long pause, uh, and now we're uh, really back into uh, a fast and furious real estate market. Kathy, would you agree? Yep, and I think that um, backing up a little bit into how some things have changed a little bit is that um, we still have some buyers that are coming, coming from out of town that are moving, 
And we have found within the last week that some of these buyers, they're not going to jump on a plane and they're not going to come out. Uh, yep. They're going to, they're looking at houses. They're looking at them with the agent going in, the agents touring them around, um, whether it be fa by FaceTime or Skype or however they're doing it. They're touring them around the house. We've got buyers that our buyer's agents have been um, writing offers sight unseen. And we do have an addendum that we put with that. It's, it was the COVID addendum that our company adopted uh, back when it was sight unseen and the buyers couldn't get into a house until they could get in with an inspector. But if it's a sight unseen, we're still using that because it's the COVID that's, that um, is keeping them from getting on the plane, from coming here. Uh, they're not about to do it, but they, you know, whether they want, uh, whether they're buying it with, without visually seeing it or whether they're buying it and then they have a certain number of days that they want to come in to view it and decide whether that they're going to accept the property or not. It's just being careful um, with not putting, e like you said, either the buyer or the seller in harm's way if that's the case, that they're writing the offer site unseen. Uh, we We've been doing that for years though, right? I mean, we've always had, right. Lansing's a physician's town. We, we have um, new residents coming in every year that need to buy homes and can't get here because they're currently, you know, working through finishing school or finishing a rotation and they can't get here and they have to buy a house pretty much um, relying on the agent to get them in. I mean, I do a few of those every year. I'm sure your team does um, several of those as well. So that's, that's not anything terribly new. And I think that that actually, those experiences prepared us really well for the COVID experience, right? Because that we, we already had that experience. Um, and you're, you're absolutely right. We do, we do use addendums and protections in those instances to say, if this is really important to you, um, we're gonna do everything that we can to make you comfortable moving forward. Um, and yet, if, if we have that roadblock of getting you into the house, we're going to find a way to make that possible before we um, get too far along in the transaction so that we're not wasting either party's time. Uh, but if this is the house for you, we'll get it under contract and then we'll find a way to get you here to, to get right. through the house. Thank you. So, um, it's great that agents are able to leave the house. Any kind of remote work that's possible is being encouraged. Do you both um, have a way of screening potential clients uh, before you meet them in person to ensure their level of seriousness before you guys start going out to look at homes in person? Um, in, do you have any recommendations for other agents? I think it's this, the same as it's been before. Pre-qualifying a buyer is pre-qualifying a buyer, um, whether whether it's before or whether it's now. I mean, we, we don't want buyers, I don't know who wants to waste their time going out and showing a property, number one, with a buyer that's not been in front of a lender or talked to a lender, uh, but you also don't want to put your seller in that position right now, too of showing houses to people that are not, not pre-qualified or pre-approved. Um, you know, there's, there's, uh, I mean, screening them just like we used to screen them is the same thing. I mean, it has, that hasn't changed in my opinion. Chris? No, it, it really hasn't. Um, I use this format though, um, for my consultations. Um, uh, that's part of my screening process now. And, and it's something that I don't think is ever going to go away. I think this is going to be part of our industry from here forward. Um, is my, my buyer and my seller consultations are, are now held via Zoom or FaceTime uh, right. first. The only reason I need to come to your home is to uh, verify what the home actually physically is, looks like, smells like, that, that's important. Uh, that's the one thing that we can't get virtually. Um, right. uh, but I do all of my screening first. It's, it's a very simple ask. I haven't had any uh, consumers or clients uh, have concerns or, or questions about asking for a meeting first um, via Zoom just to get face-to-face. -face. Um, as agents, we know it's important not to try and sell on the phone and, and you have to have some face-to-face -face in order to build a relationship and, and this is the best and most efficient way to do that and I plan on doing that from here forward. Um, I, I I, a, I'm gonna do the same thing. I mean, I'm doing, most of my listing appointments are two-step appointments and my first step is a Zoom meeting. Yeah, and, exactly. It, it, and it, we, it seems like that's probably going to be be what my the way that we're going to be doing it. But it's it it allows us to not have to have 
that face-to-face -face contact and keep putting putting ourselves in somebody else's home in the initial step. And I think truly the people that I've been on with, they've, they've enjoyed it. Yeah, it's a great experience. It's, it's efficient. It's, yes. uh, it, it's, it's not difficult. And, and they, they appreciate, one, that we're taking their safety seriously. And right. two, they don't have to have the inconvenience of coming to us. I mean, how many appointments have we had challenges of? Somebody calls, they're interested in making a, a real estate decision and they need some assistance with that. And we go, great, I can get you into my office in three days. And they go, well, I'm not available. What, what time do you have? This is, this is perfect. Hey, let me send you a Zoom link. I've got 20 minutes right now. Let's, let's see what we can do. Or we have so much more flexibility with these appointments and, and people are open to it. Um, I, I think traditionally, maybe three, four months ago, I would have been hesitant to say that people would be okay with it. And this has proven people are fine with it. Um, right. you, even... Even um, older generations that maybe aren't tech savvy or even younger generations that aren't tech savvy are still able to be walked through this process. And once they're on, they enjoy it. They, they get real value from it. Um, I don't see this going away. I, I think it's a great process. All of my listing presentations are two-step appointments anyway. This yeah. is just a great pre-qualifier way to, to be efficient. It's more efficient for them. It's more efficient for me. It's an awesome win-win. Yeah, I think it's, a, I think it's gonna become the new normal. Yep. Uh, for majority of people. And, um, you know, if my 90 year old uh, stepmother can, who's not tech savvy, can get on a Zoom happy hour with the family every week yep. <laughs> on her own, I think that we can encourage. And, and look, everybody, the older folks are using Authentisign too, and they're doing, most, the majority of them are doing just fine. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, as we, I think our encouragement to our, to the, the consumer is that we're trying to be, keep them as safe as possible. And our way of doing this is we have a step-by-step -step process and I send out my, um, my marketing strategies and my virtual marketing strategies and they seem to be receptive towards that because then they're seeing something and I'll share my screens with them, I'll send them the documents. I mean, it's just become, it's become I think a little easier for us to do some business um, because we're, we're more, it's, it's more, it's a friendly approach, you know, and they're in our houses and we're in their houses and it's, it's, you know, I think that it's a little fun for them as well as uh, for us. It's not as cold. Mm -hmm. I've been doing business this way for a long time, but I'm just so excited that, that people are finally adopting it because, yeah. um, it, it has taken such a terrible situation though to have people adopt it but I, I always felt it was um it made so much sense to do a facetime type of meeting you know initially yeah. just to get to know that that the the potential buyer or seller it right. really makes a lot of sense but you do need the face-to-face -face and yeah. um it's only good for like a preliminary listing appointment like you definitely want to go through the home because you get there it can smell different and it can yeah. different. I did do listings well and I'm sure that you guys have too. I done I did listings while we were shut down and put four properties on the market. Two of them sold within four hours. Yeah. Um sight unseen. You know that it it it's it it's worked then. It wasn't the best, but in my agent to agent remarks I did let them know that the photos had been done by the homeowner. So they kind of realized that these are, you know, and then after we were let back out. Um, I did have a photographer go over and reshoot the pictures and load them same. up, but yeah. yeah, so I think it's, it's just common sense, but, um, I think that, um, the whole face to face mm -hmm. and not being face to face, but not being in their space has mm -hmm. been important. I have another consultation with second consultation with somebody tonight. And then, um, my last step with them is going to be, you know, physically going to the house and some people. You know, I give them the option of um, you can leave the house when I get there and I'll just go through and you can leave the door unlocked, leave me the key, blah, 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 and bring bring the the PPE, which was not a not a buzzword until lately, <laughs> and bring that with me and leave it by the door for everybody. Um, but, um, you know, so, or, or if they're there, everybody's got masks. I've, I only had one pushback um, since we got back out. Um, that was day before yesterday when I went to the house he didn't want to put a mask on I had my mask on and um, I wore my go I wore gloves at that time too not knowing the situation I was walking into brought the booties and um, he didn't have a mask on and when we were going into the house I asked him if he had one because I had them in the car and I asked him if he had one he said yes and I said would you mind 
wearing the mask and he just stared at me for a minute and I said, I would greatly appreciate it because I have grandchildren and I have a newborn child uh, that's coming. So I'm trying to do my best to protect them. And then he put it right on and there was nothing else said. Mm -hmm. I think if they just understand that we're all doing it for each other's protection and it's not, we're not right. trying to put anybody, I mean, it's just, it's how you couch it. It's like anything else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us, Carol. Just to um, you. bring you up to speed, and Chris or Kathy, please correct me if I'm speaking um, incorrectly, but it seems that the consensus is that virtual open houses were great during the time of shelter in place when agents weren't able to leave their home, but mm -hmm. it might not be as relevant now that agents are able to go out and actually see the home in person and mm -hmm. see things and smell things. And I'm just wondering if that isn't an opinion that you concur with or if you have different um, a different take for us. It, it's, not the, um, it's definitely not the ideal to do a, a virtual showing. Um, I, I have done it for out of town clients and things like that. Um, and it's been great for that initial, uh, for the, you know, for an initial showing if someone is out of town. So I can see that still continuing to go on even, you know, through this with uh, when you have buyers that, you know, otherwise they would only see what you, what you sent them by email. But this way you could do, um, you know, a FaceTime type showing with them and be able to show the home, but they will have to come you know, to, if it's something that, you know, that becomes a strong interest and they want to put an offer on it, that then a physical showing is obviously 100% um, ideal. But so there are some instances that I feel still continue when, when we're not in this situation where you do have an out-of-town client uh, that, that that's, that's a good initial to kind of weed out some of the homes for them uh, that they're maybe they, they may, maybe they're interested in seven homes and you can um, show them virtually and then they narrow it down to two that they want to see when they get into town. So I do think that that there's certain circumstances where that becomes, you know, and there, there's certain um, just meetings that can happen virtually that are, are definitely more warmer, like Kathy was, was uh, discussing. They're more warm if, if they're, you know, you can see them face to face. And now that people have adopted that type of technology, it's really nice, you know, even some of the seniors to be able to, you know, to see them in person. Let's, let's kick the can down the road just a hair on open houses. Mm -hmm. um, going back to that, you know, how many houses sell off of an open house? One to two really? percent. Right. So when you have such a low percentage of houses, I think that that are going to sell off an open house to begin with. I think, and what you were talking about, Chris, is like doing half hour intervals at, for two hours at an open house. And, you know, and, and then what if you don't have anybody that logs on? You're sitting there for two hours. Nobody logs on because they know that they can call, set an appointment and go see the house themselves if they're interested. Um, my, the question has become in the industry and some, a lot of the, webinars that I've been on and a lot of the Zoom calls that I've been on listening to some of the experts out across the country are saying that, you know, this whole crisis may have put the open house genre maybe to the side and maybe we're not doing open houses anymore because they can, if they can see, if they can see a tour, if they can see a Matterport, if they can see, go and have the agent walk into the house and show them the house you know, is there is there a point to thinking that oh, having an open house and inviting all the public to to join in, and then if they whether they do or don't, is it is it worth it? If I mean, if it gets them back, if it gets them into the house, wouldn't they be going into that house to begin with if they thought that they were interested with all the technology we're putting out there right now? So I've got a, a quick thing here. So. Um, a virtual open house is a, a tool in the tool bag. It might not be a very big tool. It might not be the best tool. Um, it is a tool. Uh, and, and like anything else that we use to market our properties, um, there's no one thing that causes a home to sell, right? Um, right. We, we have multiple tools. We have multiple things. Uh, and as agents, we're all responsible for growing our own business. And I think that there is a, uh, a path or an avenue for um, many agents that this might be a way that they can, can grow their business, just like a, a normal or traditional open house was a great way for buyer agents or, or any agent 
to, to generate some in-person leads. Um, perhaps this is another tool and a path for that. Let's not confuse that with service to the seller and getting the home sold. Just like a traditional open house, one to 2% of homes maybe sell at an open house. So there's always that possibility, but it's a remote one. And yet uh, we know that it's a great avenue to, to build our business and meet with buyers. Uh, perhaps this becomes a tool that we utilize for that as uh, one of the small things that we do that doesn't maybe take as much time. Um, maybe it's a way to, to be more efficient and generate some activity uh, to provide a service to our sellers to show that, hey, we're, we're, we're doing some marketing, we're getting um, some exposure this way. Is it gonna cause your home to sell? Probably not. Um, but it's better than, than doing nothing. Uh, I think it's a really unique opportunity to do these um, you know, during the week, when, when especially while we're still shut down um, and people are able to be in front of computers and on phones during the day without a whole lot else going on. Maybe there's some value there. Um, but I, I think like anything else, it's, it's, it's how you present it. It's, it's what's the expectation, what's the purpose, um, and, and making sure that all parties are aware of that. The one thing that I think that we could find a way to do better is publish it, right? Um, I, I think right. if we want attendance, we need to find a way to um, make it very clear and obvious that you're not to attend the home in person. And yet here we have this um, published open house through the MLS that's syndicated out to all of the real estate sites. Um, Zillow, um, I know is the enemy and yet they still have um, better tools than, than what we have on our MLS for requesting virtual tours um, and, and hosting virtual open houses with the Zillow 3D tours. Um, I, I think that's not something that would be outrageously difficult for us to incorporate at an MLS level to make available to our consumers in the marketplace. Um, I'd love to see what the MLS committee is working on to um, make that more attainable and available to uh, all agents. Uh, and I think once we have that figured out, there will be added value to this path until we have that figured out, it's a pretty limited value. Yeah, when I started the, when I did the first one, that was back when this whole shutdown really started. And when I did the first one, I decided to use um, use Eventbrite. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with Eventbrite? Yep. So I went to Eventbrite and I created, I created an invitation, but then it's always the question about where are you gonna, where are you gonna link that invitation to? Yeah. Because some of the sites will not let you and link, and the MLS wouldn't let you link an Eventbrite to it. So mm -hmm. I posted it through so Eventbrite through social media because part of it too is you want to lead capture. So right. if you have these if you have these buyers coming into your open house, they obviously can't sign in. Where can how can you get them to sign in? Eventbrite gives them a way of signing in to come to your open house, and you've got some lead capture. But the key there is to finding out how we're gonna link that event right because otherwise we're just shooting it out into the atmosphere. You know, right. here's our mm -hmm. virtual open house, come on in and hopefully you'll get somebody in a chat box that gives you more than just uh, the name of Starlight, you know, that, that yeah. is coming in. Mm -hmm. So well, well, we've done we, it can, we can ask them when they come in, we can, ask, when they, when they come onto the screen that we, we can ask them to, you know, identify themselves. Hey, we'd just like you to register just like we would. You can, you can ask them, but if they're on the screen with a whole, with uh, 10 other people, they may be reluctant to do that. Yeah. That's why I think if we can have some kind of a silent sign in that people don't have to feel I like exposed. the event, right. I like the event, right. Option because like you said, they could, yeah. they could register privately. Um, I definitely think it's a great tool to have in our toolbox because um, yeah. it's it's less time for the seller to have their home, you know, open for two hour span, like you were saying, Chris, because half an hour is plenty for a virtual open house. Um, you know, people either, you know, they're on time or, or they're not. So you would do two tours of the home. And um, I think that it's uh, definitely something to use as part of your marketing. It's not, like you said, Kathy, it's, it's not the end all because a very small percentage do nope. sell that way, but it is just another marketing tool. It's another way of you know, putting it out there. What we're doing in our market center that uh, hasn't necessarily been proven yet, but I think is an elegant solution is creating a um, property specific website as a landing page yep. Um, where you link to that page in order to get the link for joining the meeting. That makes sense. Um, and so you, you either scan the QR code that you generate with goo.gl or something like that for a QR code generator, or you have the link that you share out 
that you um, maybe you click the photo to join or you click the link, whatever, and it's linked to this landing page, they get to the landing page and it requires a registration right. in order to view the live video feed um, that is being done uh, either through Facebook or through Zoom. Um, and, and that's uh, the best solution we have. Uh, and yet we still know that um, like any internet ad, um, your, your turn rate or your conversion rate on actually getting someone to fill in that data is, is pretty low. Um, we've had the best success on Facebook because it pre-populates that data for them if they click that link and they go to that um, Facebook page. Um, but it's a lot harder to create property specific uh, pages even through events on Facebook to, to publish out. Um, so there's still some work to be done there, but there are some tools and solutions that can make that still secure uh, and get that capture for both our clients and for um, us as agents. I really think that Eventbrite think was, oh, sorry, man. I was just going to say, I really think that Eventbrite makes a lot of sense for a free ticket so that they capture. Yeah, and I did have people sign in that way. Mm -hmm. That's. I think that's excellent. And if we could have a link on the MLS to that, that would be fabulous. Right. That would be nice. Sorry, Amanda, go ahead. Nope, that's okay. Um, it doesn't look like any questions have come through yet. So do we want to wrap this up with each of you giving your biggest piece of advice for working uh, not only virtually, but also through these uncertain times that we are in? Well, as for me, um, adapting to this particular time, when you take somebody like me that's been in the business for a long time, and um, the, the hardest challenge for me was, um, I, I get, if you don't use it, you lose it. We all know that, right? So it, it, for me, it was becoming a lot more savvy um, with, with uh, all types of social media, new programs, new apps, new mobile apps, all the kinds of things that are coming up because, you know, it's, it's um, my, my focus is on, on putting listings on the market and marketing them and getting them sold and not doing social media, a lot of social media and other stuff. I, my, my staff at the office, um, who I don't have right now because uh, it's stay at home, and um, it, once I get her back in, does a lot of this for me. So I was like, okay, so I had to step by step get, back, get into all of this, but it helped me to really understand it. So um, I think that it was, it, the biggest advice that I would have is, is look at all your tools that you have. And as a agent that um, has been in the business a long time and has not had to do those, it was important for me to get out there and learn how to do the things that, um, that everybody else has been doing that I wasn't really up to speed on. Um, I think that we're going to be much more I think social media and virtual everything is going to be in place for a long time to come and us adapting to it. I think we have to, I have to really embrace and adapt to the new normal uh, and help make the new normal. I mean, we're, we are, we are, as uh, one of our fearless leaders says, we're the, the Calvary. I mean, we are the ones that are charging forward and we are the ones that are going to, we don't want the, the consumer to totally define us. We want to help them to embrace the changes that we're going through and lead them in a way that's going to make it make it acceptable to them and is going to help us to get the job done in a more efficient manner and uh, keep everybody safe because this isn't going away for a while. So, yeah, I think that um, I think really adding we're changing our set or when we're setting our expectations for our buyers or sellers well, we're adding pieces to it now as to you know some of the limitations of the virtual types of visits those are all going to be added and like you were saying prepping people on you know the ppe to you know be prepared for when they do go out on showings that's just we're going to have to add that to our buyers presentation and um you know obviously all of us need to adapt all of our presentations at this point of those initial consultations to address all of these issues. So it's just expanding those so that there's that, that we have them prepared for that. And really like I think that 
I, I'd really love to see, at least during this period, but I, is if there was a way to, yes, they've seen it virtually, if they could do almost like a pre-inspection, if you will, um, you know, to, if that could be part of the expectations to, before they pay for an inspection, for a formal inspection, you know, to have them do a physical inspection. Does that make sense to you guys to be able to, you know, kind of have that as part of the protocol? So they do the virtual showing and then to be able to do a physical showing, you know, and that, that, that the sellers would expect that, that they're going to want to do a physical inspection before they uh, order an, a formal inspection. Do you guys see the value in as that? As an, an in-person walkthrough? Um, to do a yeah, physical kind of walkthrough before they order the, the inspection. Do you yeah, see it's, it? it's, it's an additional contingency that, that um, I, I think Kathy was addressing with uh, utilizing the COVID addendum, um, just creating an additional contingency clause for that oh, I'm sorry, but, okay. That's okay. That's okay. But the thing I, I we, you know, we're in agreement with you because the, we have, um, we have found that I'm sure you may have found too, that some of the inspectors, um, the inspectors are going to charge them for at least coming to the house. They're not going to do this for free. Show up at the house, the buyer comes and the buyer says, I don't want the house. Exactly. And then the inspector's already there. Right. So now that we can get back out, there's no reason not to show the house to them, even mm -hmm. if they're in there for a short period of time. And people are doing showings every day. Yeah. So they you can just don't still know if this is over, house. over. Like yeah. if this, you know, if it spikes, if this happens again, yeah. Yeah, but if we run down that road again and everybody, is, and we're taken out of the picture, you know, we're back, we are back to the virtual and we are back to the, the um, yeah, inspector part, so. I work, I use three inspectors very regularly in my business more than, more than any other inspectors. And so I have great relationships with them. So during the COVID, one of the things that I did is, um, one, uh, I, I made it very clear to my, my buyer clients that if we're going down this path, it's because you have true interest. We're not using this to kick the tires or, or to just check out a home. Um, but we have a property under contract. We're going to proceed with inspections. Um, we're going to be on a, a Zoom or a, a Google Meet uh, with the inspector. He's going to do a visual tour of the home with us as an unbiased third party, saying what he sees with his eyes at the property. And if um, in that first tour, we, we, come across a big roadblock. Hey, this is um, a deal killer. They've been smoking in the home. Um, and we didn't know that there was no way we could know that. And you have allergies or a major personal objection to that. Great. We're out. Uh, Mr. Inspector, I'm going to pay you for your time, $50, $75, whatever it's going to take. Um, I, the agent, um, maybe I'm willing to cover that. Maybe it's an expectation that I've set with my clients that they cover that. Uh, and yet that's money well spent because now we're not wasting anybody's time. Um, pursuing a home and doing a formal inspection. But it, that, but it was under contract do. before they did that, correct? Absolutely. Okay. You, you have to have a contract in place before you have an inspector present, in my opinion. In my opinion, yes, absolutely, 100%. <laughs> but that was a, a, an elegant solution um, that, that I think uh, worked out well for, for my clients. Um, so I, I like that. I guess my biggest piece of advice going forward today is um, like anything else in real estate, don't resist the change. Um, the more time and energy you spend resisting the change, the more you're spinning your wheels and losing ground. Um, dive in, um, you know, learn, grow. Um, whether you've been, whether you're an agent that's been doing this for 30 plus years, or whether you're um, somebody like me who's been doing this for for just a handful of years, um, it, it doesn't change. Real estate is an ever-evolving industry, and um, this definitely accelerated some changes for us, and yet this is a change that we were headed towards anyway. So great opportunity to, to dive in, to master a new craft, to master a new ability to communicate um, and, and embrace it because it's not going away whether we have a, a reason to stay at home or not. It's created new efficiencies and new opportunities uh, to, to build and grow client relationships um, that's not going to go away. So the more time you spend resisting that change or, or feeling bad about our situation, the more time you're losing ground. Um, so, so take a breath, uh, uh, embrace the change and dive in and you'll be better for it. Yeah, I don't know anybody about everybody else. And I, I kind of think you guys are the same way that, that, that I am is that I've been busier since we've been home than I was before <laughs> because well, there's I'm, I'm so home with much. Two infants and a toddler. So I've yeah, had like so you're, an hour and a half a day. Yeah. Trust me, I'm sucked. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you 
You are. The past week has been really busy with, um, as far as real estate business, but you're right. talking about being home, being busy. That no, I'm talking about being busy with real estate yeah. because yeah. of all the, all the changes that we need to embrace, all the things that you have to dig into. Mm -hmm. um, do it, changing the way that we're looking at our business and the way that we're going to model it going forward has created a lot of, it's created work in, at the same time, you know, for prospecting, talking to people, calling your database, sending out emails. I mean, there's, it's, I, I think it's forced us to be more consumer centric because we are, we are touching people now that we didn't touch as regularly before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. During, it kind of, I don't know if, about you guys, but it kind of felt like a pause button, you know, everything and buyers kind of stopped. I don't know if that happened for you, but for me, it felt a little bit like things had gone yeah. on pause there for, but yeah. it, but it did give the time to do exactly what you're talking about, to dive right. in and just to, uh, you know, just strengthen any, any weaknesses on technology, you know, and, right. and, and dig in deeper um, to be able to do more with it. And then, but I was, the past week has been a, a serious uptick for me. Right. I don't know about for you guys with showing requests and things like that right. and with, you know, interest. And everybody's businesses are different. So if anybody is listening to this and they say, oh, well, they're really busy yeah. and I'm not, why are they busy and I'm not? Everybody's business takes a pause at some point in time. So mm -hmm. it's, you, you keep just, so when you have the pause, then get onto something that's going to help you. So when you don't have, when that pause button is off, you're right back into it, but you've learned a new, you've learned, you've learned something new. Always be learned, trying to learn something new whenever there's a pause, because that way it'll just make you more efficient when the pause is over. And also just reaching out to people to just see how they're doing, not asking yeah. for business, just see how they're doing. You know, exactly. people that you've worked with in the past, uh, you know, past clients and things like that, and business will come. Just yeah. genuinely caring about people and you know how are you doing in all of this it's well more people more people are home now than ever before mm -hmm. you're you're apt to catch people on the phone now yeah. more than ever before mm -hmm. and as much as people people say well you can just email me or you can text me again we all flop back to to the very beginning that it's still a relationship business so mm -hmm. while they are at home and yeah. while they're maybe looking for a break from something that they're doing and they get a phone call from you. I mean, that's that's powerful for you and for them. Absolutely. Thank you all so much again for your time today. We we'll really appreciate it. And look forward to the recording later in case you need to catch up on anything. It's uh, a pleasure. That, everyone, have a great day, a great afternoon. You, stay you. dry and stay well. All right. Thanks, son. <laughs> Thanks, son. Sun, <laughs> yes. Sun. Thanks, Thanks Amanda. Day, everybody. Thanks, guys. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.